Hey everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. It's Christy Z from Zeal Studio on Etsy and Zeal Vintage. And today I'm making some candles. So yesterday I was doing some candle dressing where I was making candle uh, spell candles by dressing them. And today I'm actually moving into making my own candles. Um, so I'm just going to show you a little bit of the process and then I'm going to show you how I dress the candles with herbs and crystals and flowers to promote different wellness or, you know, some people call them spell candles. Um, there's a lot of different names for them, but either way, um, you can do it with candles that you make yourself or that you buy. And since I had all this extra wax, I thought I would make some candles. So I'm going to show you a little bit of my candle making process. I do have, as you can see here, a lot of my wicks are ready to go. I've already set the wicks in the containers and I'm just going to show you how I do that with this little tin. So these are little tins that are going to be spell candles. They have little lids so that they can travel. And I've made sure that the wick that I'm using, which is very important, that you're using the correct size wick for the correct size container. Otherwise, you're going to have too small or too large of a flame, which of course is a fire hazard. And the one thing I'm all about is safety. So let me show you how I wick the candles. So we have these stickers. These are candle wick stickers. Now I have seen some people use um, hot glue and just, you know, hot glue on the bottom here, but this is an easy and safe way to do it. And this is pretty much how most people. So we take the sticker and we stick it on the bottom of the wick and then we're gonna peel the little cover off. And then we're gonna center this in the center. You wanna get it right in the center there. I'm just going to, oh, and that one, of course, isn't quite centered. Oops. There we go. So we've got it just about in the center there. And we're going <clears> to, <throat> sorry, we're going to stick it down really, really well. I'm just pressing down on that. And now I do have... Um, so, for example, these ones have the professional wick holders, this little metal thing which keeps the wick centered while you're pouring the wax and while it's cooling, but I only have four of them. So what I do, I'm actually going to break it because it's a little bit too big. So I'm just taking a dowel, a basic, you know, skewer for your kebabs. And we're going to do like so. So now that we have our wick centered in here, as you can see, it's kind of flopping around. So we're going to keep it. And clothespins work really well too. You can use a clothespin. Um, you can use a popsicle stick. You can use a pencil if that's all you have. Um, basically something to just keep that wick. And we're just going to wrap the wick around the, like so. So I've kind of wrapped it around here and we're just going to make sure it's centered and that's it. Now I just have one more to do. Um, since I've done all the other containers, I'm just going to do this one and then we're going to heat up our wax and get going. So today I'm using soy wax. Um, I like soy wax because it's a clean burning wax, unlike paraffin. Um, some people use paraffin, which is also used for canning, but it's a... So paraffin, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is derived of oil. And some people say it just doesn't burn very clean. Um, so a reason that I like soy wax is it's natural, it's derived from soy. Um, it's a very clean and ecological type of wax. So that's another reason why I'm using soy. It takes fragrance um, and color really well. Although I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm going to be fragrancing these. I might. 
I do have some really beautiful green apple spring fragrance that I think would be really nice. So, But if you are going to put fragrance, make sure you use a fragrance that burns well and is designated for the purpose. Um, because again, when you're working with candles, you have to realize, you know, it is fire and you just want to be very, very safe. Okay, so we've got all our candles whipped. And now we're going to melt some wax. Oops, I got one over here where the wick is sticking down. We're just going to fix that one here. Here we go. Okay, and I'm just going to show you all my wicked candles. All right, so as you can see, we've got all our containers wicked. And I'm not sure that it's a pretty big batch. I'm not sure I have a fairly small pitcher um, and I'm using a metal pitcher and I'm actually using a double boiler, not a bain marie. Um, so yeah, we've got all our containers ready to go. As you can see, they're all centered. Everything's looking good. And we're gonna start melting our soy wax. So this is the soy wax that I'm using. Um, it's a soy flake wax. I just ordered it from Amazon. There are actually some good suppliers on Amazon or locally you can get it. Um, I do like the flaked wax. And so we're basically going to use a double boiler here and we're just gonna wait for this to heat up. And then I'm actually gonna turn it down to just a simmering boil once it gets rolling and then we'll get our wax going. I also want to mention it's really important to have a temperature gauge. Um, when you're working with something like wax, it is a volatile substance. Um, and it's really important that you work within the parameters of the wax and the temperatures that are best. Um, for soy wax, you don't want to heat it over 200, so I'm going to stay at around 180 and then we're gonna actually let it cool before we add our fragrance and pour it. Um, we'll probably pour around 135. So it's really important. You can use a candy thermometer. Um, if you don't have this type of thermometer, you can use also just a candy thermometer. All right, so we're just gonna wait for that to heat up and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I have my wax melting very slowly and it's actually in a double boiler, not a Bain Marie. A lot of people just stick it in the pot with the water and I always use this method for melting any soap or wax because to me it's safer, it takes a little longer, but I fill my double boiler up to probably about here and then I actually sit it in the double boiler so that the bottom of the pitcher is not touching the burner at all. And it does take a little bit longer, um, but I'm just gonna be patient. And you'll notice with melting wax, you do need to be a bit patient. Um, but I personally like this method. I find it's very safe. There's very little chance that I'm gonna overheat the wax, even if it does take a little bit longer because it's basically just uh, the steam is, as you can see, melting it even though it's very slow. So we'll come back when it's melted. And what I'm gonna do is when it does melt, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of fragrance, um, just more so for wellness properties uh, than, than for fragrance, because with wax, um, you really need to put about six to seven or eight percent volume of the wax in terms of fragrance to create a good throw or a good smell as um, as it goes but it is melting it's just taking a wee bit and I don't have it on a boil I have it on let's see about four actually once it gets going um, I just leave it on like four or five and just be very patient we'll come back when this is melted we'll add a little bit of uh, fragrance and then we'll start pouring our candles the fun part's really dressing the candles though. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to show you some of the candles that I've already done. And 
then yeah to dress these ones once they're cool for spell candles and as you can see we're getting some melting here so we'll just come back in a little bit okay let's have a check and see how we're doing as i said it's only been a couple minutes so we still need to exercise some patience um, and just to let you know i did get this lovely pouring pitcher uh, in a kit online and it came with the pitcher it came with the wick center holders it came with the wicks the stickers and some metal tins which were really beautiful that had the zodiac signs on them so you know you can get uh, starter kits quite inexpensively and that's sort of what I did because I already had a lot of um, you know extra wax from my soaping from making um, lotion and hair products so I did just order a bit of extra wax and then a starter kit and again I already had some extra tins as well from my hair products and lotion products um, which I've tested with liquid to make sure that they're you know they'll hold hot wax because I pour my I pour my hair product waxes directly into the tins. So as you can see, it melts really slowly. <laughs> Especially in this method, it melts extra slow. Um, but once it gets all melted down, then we're gonna temp it and see where we're at with the temperature. Okay, so everything's melted. Um, we're at about 156 with the temperature. Now I know they do say to heat it to around 180. To 185 but I don't want to get it heating up more than that because I want it at about 135 to add the fragrance and pour it so I'm just going to take it off the heat and let it cool down we're at about 156 with the temperature so I'm going to let it cool down about 20 degrees add some fragrance and then we're ready to pour our candles hi I'm back so my temperature is reading at 136.4 and I want it about 135 to 130. At this point, I'm gonna add a bit of fragrance, give it another cool for about one degree. Oh, there we are, 135. So we're ready to start pouring pretty soon. Okay, so I've added my fragrance. Um, and basically, I just added a little bit of sandalwood essential oil because um, more so for healing and wellness than the actual scent. So I'm going to start pouring and I'm not going to fill them up quite all the way. Because I do want to leave room to dress them with the crystals and all that. And we do have a bit of spillage, and that's okay. So this is probably just going to be enough for... Um, I'm just going to move this one over here. That one's a little on the full side.
Okie dokes. There we go. So, basically this pitcher made four, five, six, seven, eight smaller candles. Um, so I'm going to have to come back and do some more for the other ones. But so far, so good. Whoops. Okay, I'll just give you a look at that. Although I did pour some of the square ones a little bit too full because I wanted to leave room to decorate them. Um, but that's okay. So I basically did these ones. And I've tried to leave some room to add the herbs and the crystals. And we'll come back when they're done and we're going to dress them. That's the fun part. Hi, welcome back. Thanks again for joining me. So I wanted to show you some of the other candles that I've dressed. These are tea light candle sets. Um, now these were not candles that I made myself, but I just dressed them. Um, sorry, we'll see if we can get some lighting. So each one has a special sort of recipe that I use. Um, for example, the pink one is love, green is fortune, Yellow is for clarity and stress relief. Um, and then, you know, I sort of have my own combinations that I use. Um, so these are all sets that I did yesterday. And you can just do these using pre-made tea lights, which is what I did. Um, but since I had all that extra wax, oh my gosh, these are so cute. See the little jasmine flower in there? And that one has bay leaf and poppy seed. Um, and there's a black protection one. So these all have teeny tiny little crystals on them. And the thing that I'm excited about of using my own containers, whoops, let's see if we can get it to focus. So these are just sets that I made for friends and family and for some clients who, um, and these are some votive sets or votive sets that I did, which are super, super cute. Um, they have little lids on them, so you can just take the lid off. You can pop it into your bag, um, take it to go, kind of like a spell to go. And they're really pretty gifts. Um, so yeah, this is how I dress my candles, and I'm going to show you how I do that with my own candles that we just made. And I'm so excited because I get to use some really big crystals. Um, for these ones, obviously, I just used um, smaller crystals. So let's get dressing our candles. Okay, so this is my candle dressing workspace, <laughs> which is my dining room table. I'm just going to show you a few of the ingredients I have. Um, so we have all kinds of herbs. So we have poppy seed, we have pine, we have acorn, um, we have sea salt, we have Himalayan salt, basil, bay leaf, cinnamon, sage, um, we have some thyme, um, we also have some rosemary is like a key one, lavender is another key one, so we have lavender flower, rosemary, um, I have all kinds of dried flowers including rose, lavender, straw flower, um, that kind of thing, there's some little crystals, um, we're going to be using these bigger crystals, though, um, which is really nice. They're just quartz, different colored quartz or hematite. I also have some mica, and I have some little glitters. Um, because I don't have any currently black wax, I just use a little bit of black glitter on the protection ones. Um, so that's basically it. And then also I have these little spell candles. Um, which I use to impart different color intentions. Uh, there's my lavender. Oh, and we have some little baby jasmine flowers, which I brought in from, I think they're from India. I'm not sure. Um, we have some sage drying over here. And we have some dried citrus, which I dried myself. So yeah, um, you know, a lot of these things you can find in your spice cupboard, things like basil, rosemary, um, 
you know, little pine cones, things like that. And yeah, so we've got a lot of stuff to work with, so let's get going. Now this one I did kind of mess up the middle a little bit. When I was taking it out, I stuck my finger in it. But that's not going to show because we're going to cover it with some herbs. Although I do try and keep the wick area fairly clear. Um, sorry, that's my cat snoring. <laughs> but we're going to get started and dress these candles. This is totally the fun part. Candles have pretty much set up now, as you can see. And I'm going to give you an example of how I dress them with crystals, flowers, and herbs. Now, I do have my own um, spell candle recipes. Um, they're something that I've researched. And, you know, I'm kind of an old hippie, so it's not my first candle magic rodeo, let's say. Um, but I'm just going to show you an example of how I dress them. And the thing is, you can put whatever you think looks great in there. Um, mine are kind of formulated for various wellness and spells and this is a popular one of course finances uh, being how things are um, everybody could use a little more money right so this is one that's for finances and we're going to start with something you probably have in your cupboard which is poppy seeds just regular poppy seeds um, so poppy seeds are known to bring prosperity um, then we're going to add, you know, it brings um, purification for money. So we're going to add some of these in here. And these are pretty much well set. Um, now if you wanted, you could take a little bit more clear wax and just do a little layer of clear wax on there. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm going to put colored wax from uh, spell candles over top of the crystals. So the first thing I'm doing with this one is the poppy seed. And then we're going to add in something else that you have in your cupboard, which probably a lot of people don't know is for prosperity, which is bay leaf. Um, and I just have a couple little pieces here. You don't need much. Um, keep in mind, you want to kind of keep it around the outside of the candle. I'm just going to crumble a few bits of the bay leaf in there. Bay leaf is really good for attracting um, good fortune, for finances, for money. And so we're just going to crumble that on in there. You don't want the chunks to be too, too large. And again, you want to kind of keep your path to the wick clear for safety. Um, you don't really want too much clogging up your wick or in the flame, um, which is also part of why I use the colored wax on top um, as well, but we'll get to that. Okay, so we have our bay leaf in there. And the next thing we're going to put in there is some jasmine flower. Oh, and basil. I forgot my basil. So that's another thing you probably have in your cupboard is just regular basil. We're going to add some of that in there. This one smells really good. Now, I also have sandalwood um, essential oil in here, um, which is really good for different types of... Uh, spell candles, especially for like route opening, um, change, that type of stuff. Um, so it's kind of like having a little extra layer of intention. And I'm just going to add my basil in here. Sprinkle a little bit. Again, you don't want too, too much. You don't actually want chunks to catch fire and you don't want them to clog up your wick. So we're just add a little basil in there. There we go. And next we want some green aventurine, which is, um, I'm just gonna use some little chips. So these is my green aventurine, which is really well known for attracting good fortune and finance. And I'm also gonna use another crystal in here which is green as well which is just our green quartz because 
I had a lot of leftover quartz from my jewelry making and they're really beautiful too. So we're gonna add that one in there as well. Just over to the side here. I'm sorry, I wish I had an overhead camera or an overhead stand because I'm, um, I'm actually just to anchor that one down, I'm going to put a little green wax first. So um, I'm using these little green spell candles and I actually got these at my local druggist. I think they're birthday candles, but um, it's pretty much the same thing. I've blessed them. I've put some rose incense in a done a cleansing with it first. Okay, so we're gonna add some green wax here. And then I'm gonna anchor that crystal in there in the wax. There we go. Just keep it off to the side. our green aventurine in there as well and I keep a good thing to note is always trim if you're using these little candles trim the wick. you don't want your wick too big okay and then we're gonna go in with some wax over stuff and I'm just gonna gently drop a few drops of wax of the green um, the reason I'm using green is because green is of course associated with fortune, wealth, finances, um, financial well-being, that type of thing, attracting money. Um, I've seen even some people put little bits of dollars in their candle, but I won't be doing that. Um, we're really just going for like the herbs and stuff here. And I'm trying not to light my actual wick on fire. And I'm just gonna go around over the herbs that I've added and I'm gonna just seal them in with this green wax. And so the purpose of that wax is twofold. One, to sort of hold the herbs securely in there and just give them a little coverage so that when the wax does start to melt, they will just melt and float and pool to the side because we don't want them to light fire. Um, you don't want your herbs, dry herbs right near the flame. So yeah, we're just going to cover them with a little bit of green wax. It's a very meditative process. And uh, actually these smell really good with the sandalwood. I did put some sandalwood essential oils in there. Um, oops. Again, just I'm gonna snip this wick so I don't um, accidentally light it on fire. And if you you know what if that happens and your wick catches, just trim it. You're fine. Um, but it's so important to be careful when you're working with candles and fire and uh, things that are flammable. I cannot say enough stuff about safety. Um, now I have seen people put drops of essential oil on top of the candle and I would not recommend that to be honest because essential oil has a fairly low flash point and you don't want your flame to catch a drop of essential oil. If you're going to use essential oils, it is much better to put them inside the candle wax when you're making the candles. Don't try and add it afterwards because You've got an uneven distribution of something that's volatile, that has a flash point. And again, that's not safe. So I do always try and practice safety. And I think we're almost done with our green wax here. These ones take a little bit more than the tea lights, but that is perfectly fine. Okay, and then there we go. Just a couple more drops. There. Excellent. And I'll just give you a look at that. Just 
bring the camera around here. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. So there we go. We've got our crystal, we've got our poppy seeds, our basil, our bay leaf, and our aventurine, which is the smaller crystal over here. Right here is the aventurine. We've got a green quartz. And I love these little tins that I used um, because they have some of the zodiac signs on them. And there you go. Now, you don't have to follow my recipes if you want to put purple crystals or, you know, you like other herbs and whatnot. Please, obviously, feel free to decorate them and dress your candles however you like. I'm just going by um, sort of more traditional um, hippie and you know, Wiccan uh, tradition is in terms of which herbs I'm using for which purposes and intents. And then I'm just going to trim this wick down, obviously, because we have this giant wick here. Um, but basically, that's how I do it. And I can show you the other one that I did, which is a love candle, which is another really popular one. Okay, so here's the love candle that I did. And what is in there is a angel or a rose quartz, rose petal, a pink Himalayan salt, and some rosemary, and then some pink wax. And so these are really, really, really cute. And again, this is um, more of a traditional kind of um, dressing. But yeah, that's how I dress my candles. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Um, and I hope that it's inspired you to maybe dress your own tea lights or make your own candles. So thanks so much for joining me. If you like this video, please make sure you hit like and don't forget to hit subscribe. I really appreciate your support. And if you'd like to see more videos on crafts, DIYs, candles, soaping, and that sort of thing. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much. Stay safe and be well.